Hi, my name's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to start my opening off my book advent calendar. So as you see this, I will have finished opening the whole calendar, but as I'm filming today, it is the 2nd of December. So I have put together a book advent calendar for myself again this year. Um, and it's all secondhand books. So I have a book subscription with a small independent um book selling business called the gently used book club i'll link their website down below this is not sponsored um and all i've done is i have saved a few subscription boxes up so i have 12 books um, the books arrive already wrapped and then all i've done is added the numbers on um so i'll open one every other day in the run-up to christmas following with uh, ending with christmas eve in terms of genre this year, I've kind of given Pat, who runs the Gently Used Book Club, free reign. So I think there's one or two genres that I've said I'm not too keen on. But other than that, I'll have a bit of everything. So there really could be anything in uh, in this lovely little box of books. So, um, so today is the second. This is quite a slim little book that we have. Let's see what I've got very exciting hey okay. yes this is excellent so this is the lonely londoners by sam selvin i really really like that cover i have heard of this before um so when was this published this was published 1956 um so i think it's like a bit of a modern classic it's one that it's definitely been on my radar Certainly in the last year or so. I'm not sure where I've heard of it or who I've heard talk about it. But I've definitely heard someone talk about it. There's only a short blurb. It says, in the hopeful aftermath of war, they flocked to the mother country, West Indians in search of prosperous future in the glitter city. Instead, they have to face the harsh realities of living hand to mouth, of racism, bone chilling, bone chilling weather and bleak prospects. Yet friendships flourish among these lovely, lonely, lovely, lonely Londoners and in time they learn to survive. Excellent. That's a really excellent first start to the calendar. Should we read the first sentence together? I always like to do that when I get a new book. Uh, read the first sentence together. Okay. One grim wind winter evening when it had a kind of unrealness about London with a fog sleeping restlessly over the city and the lights showing in the blur as if is not London or at all, but some strange place on another planet. Moses Alouetta hop on a number 46 bus at the corner of Chepstow Road and Westbourne Grove to go to Waterloo to meet a fellow who was coming from Trinidad on the boat train. Good first sentence. Today is the 4th of December, so let's see what book I have got today. Never heard of this. This is The Merman by Carl Johan Valgren. Um, okay, so let's have a look. So it was published, it was published in 2013. It's translated from Swedish by Ellen Flynn. Only a dark secret can save them. Life changes for Nella the day she discovers the mysterious creature of the sea. Used to a routine of drudgery, neglect and responsibility, each day is a battle to keep herself and her brother out of harm's way. When she turns to her friend Tommy for help, she is baffled by the peculiar comings and goings of his brother, of his brothers at their dilapidated fishing hut. But then she uncovers the reason behind their enigmatic behaviour and her life is open to the realities of a mind-boggling secret. The Merman is a dark and haunting fairy tale for adults about sibling love and betrayal and what happens when the mundane collides with the strange and wonderful. I have never heard of this. I love it when that happens. Um, amazing. Should we read? Should we read the first line? There is no beginning and no ending. That's a good first line. Interesting. Amazing. Very, very happy again with the second book. Today is the 6th of December. So let's see what we have. So far we've had one modern classic and one translated book. And I did say that my two favourite, they're not really genres, but categories are 
modern classics and translated. So we're doing well so far. Let's see what we have today. Uh, I don't think I've heard of this. The mermaid chair. So yesterday we had the merman. These were all ran in a random order because I just shuffled them around when they came. The Mermaid Chair by Sue Monk Kidd, who wrote The Secret Life of Bees. I feel like I've heard of that book, but I've not heard of this one. So, let's see. When was it published? It was published in 2005. Uh, it's got... Oh, that's funny. It's got like a little um, stamp in the front. Sisters of Notre Dame. Is that like a nunnery? At uh, Birkdale, Southport, which is only down the road from here. Um, the people that run the gently used book club are in, like, I think the West Midlands. So that's funny. Anyway, let's read the blurb. 42 and married for half her life, Jessie Sullivan honestly believes she is happy. She has a lovely home, a dependable husband, and an accomplished and adored teenage daughter. But when shocking news about her mother compels Jessie to visit the remote island of her childhood, Jessie finds herself drawn to brother Thomas, a Benedictine monk, on the verge of taking his final vows. I'm not going to read the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. But she still has to discover how much of her old life has a place in the new one. Interesting. Should we read the first line? I always read the first line when I get a new book. Does anyone else do that? This is a good first line. In the middle of my marriage, when I was above all Hugh's wife and Dee's mother, one of those unambiguous women with no desire to disturb the universe, I fell in love with a Benedictine monk. Ooh, interesting. So today is the 8th of December. I thought I would head back to filming with a slightly festive backdrop. We haven't got a Christmas tree this year because the cat wrecked the last one. Um, by climbing in it, so we haven't bothered this year. Um, but let's see what book I have got today. Exciting. Oh, okay. What is this? I don't know which is the title and which is the author, which might be a stupid. Yeah, okay. So this is Bethany Bethany by Fred Dagua. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Let's, when was it published? It was published in 2003. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? So the author is from Guyana and London. Let's read the blurb. A Caribbean country on the verge of collapse, a small town called Boundary, a rambling house inhabited by three generations of the Abrahams family and a little girl who is trying to make sense of it all. Bethany Bethany is five years old when her father dies and her mother leaves her to fend for herself in the Abraham's household. The place simmers with resentment. Her uncles and aunts think her mother killed her father. Her grandmother refuses to leave her room. Bethany is the scapegoat for it all. In Bethany, Dagua has created both a lovable character and a symbol of the search for the search of a nation to make itself whole. If Boundary is Guyana, then Bethany Bethany a girl torn between two names is the spirit of its people poised for flight. Oh, interesting. I'm not sure if I've read any books set in Guyana. So should we read this like a little I'll read the I'll read this first sentence. Um, I live in my grandparents' house surrounded by my father's two brothers and four sisters their wives and husbands and some two dozen children between them. I'm going to read the next sentence because it looks good. Everyone around me knows my mother had a hand in the death of my father and she abandoned me here when I was five so that I might live as a daily reminder of her among the people closest to my father. I like the writing style actually so this looks very intriguing. Let me know if you've heard of this. Another excellent book. Hello, it's now the 10th of December. And today we have a book that I have not heard of. The Colour of Thunder by Suzanne Harrison. A vividly atmospheric tale of Hong Kong, a gripping and intriguing mystery. Okay, this sounds good. When was this published? Let's see. So it was published in 2021. 
It's written by an Australian journalist who has lived in Hong Kong since 1999. Let's read the blurb. One small island, six troubled lives and the storm of the century on its way. In one of the world's most vibrant international cities, present-day Hong Kong, the lives of six people become irreversibly intertwined. The past is catching up with those running away from it, while the futures of others hangs dangerously in the balance. But who knows the most and what will they do to keep it that way? Hmm. This does sound intriguing. Should we see? Should we see what the first sentence is? Only bad things happened when it was this hot. Good sentence. Yes, I am very intrigued by this. It's the 12th day, which means that we are halfway through the month, halfway through the um, advent calendar, not halfway through the month. Um, although it is less than two weeks until Christmas and I have not done much Christmas shopping, so I do need to get a move on. But let's see what we have today. Ooh, interesting cover. <coughs> Botchan by Natsume Suzeki. A modern classic, newly translated by Jay Cohn. It's got like um, is that like a grasshopper or a cricket or something? Mm. So French flaps. Ooh, it's got like a cover on it actually. Mm. Exciting. Um, let's see. So first of all, when was this first published? It has an introduction as well. So it's translated from Japanese. It was first published in 1906. That's exciting. I don't think I've read anything um, like that old from Japan. Let's read the blurb. Like the Catcher in the Rye or The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Botchen, a hilarious tale about a young man's rebellion against the system in a country school is a classic of its kind. It's an enjoyed timeless popularity making it probably the most widely read novel in modern Japan. Mm. So it's about, let's see, so what's it about? Um, the setting is Japan's deep south where the author himself spent time teaching English in a boys' school. Into this conservative world with its social proprieties and established pecking order breezes Botchen down from the big city with scant respect for either his elders or his noisy young charges and the result is a chain of collisions large and small light funny never slow moving interesting interesting so it has got an introduction as well i'll probably have to make sure i read that after just in case it gives stuff away should we read the first sentence from the time I was a boy, the reckless streak that runs in my family has brought me nothing but trouble. That's a good sentence. I'll read the second one because this looks good as well. Once when, I, once when I was in elementary school, I jumped out of one of the second story windows and I couldn't walk for a week. Oh, I'm very excited by this, actually. Very, very. That might be, this might be the one I'm most excited by so far. So before I open today's book, I thought I'd update you on an idea I have had. So I'll be participating in the Past and Future Readathon in January. Um, future Jennifer will have done a TBR video for the Readathon, which I'll link down below. Um, one of the prompts is new edition. Read a recent edition to the TBR or your newest book. So I thought for that, I could read a book from my advent calendar. Um, and the way... I'm going to choose which book to read is based on which first line I like the most, which first line is the most enticing to me. So just now I've gone through all the first lines that we've had so far to refresh my memory. Um, between these two so far, so we've got the colour of thunder. The first line is only bad things happened when it was this hot, which I think is a good first line. And this one from Botchan, which is... From the time I was a boy, the reckless streak that runs in my family has brought me nothing but trouble. And I think we're going to go with Botchen as the winner so far. 
because we know straight away it's going to be first person perspective which is something i really like um and sounds like sounds like an interesting character so i think botchin is the one to beat so far and um, at the end of this video do let me know what first line you would have chosen as your favorite first line um, so we'll see what today's book is This is Gone and Must Go by Taye Selassie, a Waterstones exclusive edition, including an essay by the author, a granted best young British novelist 2013. I wonder if, one moment, I've got this granted short story collection, I wonder if the author's in here, let me have a look. Yeah, they are. There's a short story called Driver in here. I've not read this short story collection yet. But anyway, that was a tangent. Um, Gone and Must Go. I've never heard of it. So when was it um, published? Let's see. 2013. So it says, meet the Saiz, a Nigerian Ghanaian family living in the US. A, fam a family prospering until the day father and surgeon Kweku Sai is the victim of a grave injustice. Ashamed, he abandons his beautiful wife Fola and their little boys and girls, causing the family to fracture and spiral out into the world. On uncertain, troubled journeys until many years later, tragedy unites them. Um, this sounds good. I've never heard of it. What's the cover? I can't tell what that cover is. Is that? I don't know what the cover actually is. Um, let's read the first. Oh, it was a family tree. Although, to be fair, it's not a very big family tree. Family trees always intimidate me because it means there's going to be a lot of characters. And it makes me think it's going to be a family saga, which is like literally my least favourite <laughs> type of book. Um, pronunciation guide, that's helpful. Right, let's read. Hmm. Hmm. First line is, Kweku dies barefoot on a Sunday before sunrise. His slippers by the doorway to the bedroom like dogs. Kweku dies barefoot on a Sunday before sunrise. His slippers by the doorway to the bedroom like dogs. That is a good first line. But is it better than... I should have kept the page open, shouldn't I? Um, is it better than... From the time I was a little boy, the reckless streak that runs in my family has brought me nothing but trouble. No, I think this still wins. I think Botchin is the, still the winner so far. I'm just, I'm really liking that first line. Hello, it's now the 16th of December. So what do we have here? I have heard of the author. This is Runaway by Alice Munro, with an introduction by Jonathan Franson. Winner of the booker in 2009. Is that the author rather than the book? Um, right, let's see what we have. So, um, oh, so Alice Munro is Canadian. This is from, this is from 2004. And what's it about? Let's read the blurb. The matchless Munro makes art out of every day in this dazzling new collection. This is short stories. Here are men and women of wildly different times and circumstances, their lives made vividly palpable by the nuance and empathy of Munro's writing. Ah, right, let's see. So is the short stories. That's exciting if it is. Yeah, I think it is. That's good. I like short stories. Um, so how are we going to do first lines? If you read the first line of the first story, I guess. First story is called Runaway. Carla heard the car coming before it topped the little rise in the road that around here they called a hill. I think it's fine, but I don't think it beats. From the time I was a boy, the reckless streak that runs in my family has brought me nothing but trouble. That is still the winner. Um, but I am pleased with that because it's short stories. I don't like that cover. I don't really like people on covers um but i'm very intrigued by this let me know if you've read any alice munro before hello it's december the 18th today 
so let's see what we have I feel like I've heard about this book really recently and that I wanted to read it it's The Stranding by Kate Sawyer well, I have definitely heard about this recently so let me see so it's from 2021 let's see um, so let's read what it says Ruth is ignoring the news like most people she has relationship problems job stress friends and family who need her Ruth has a life but the news is going to catch up with Ruth and her problems are about to be swept away along with the rest of the world only when the comforts of her old existence are gone does Ruth realise how she might finally be able to live to the fullest is this is this a bit dystopic have I made that up I don't know. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it is. I've definitely seen someone talk about this recently, maybe on Booktube, or maybe I've heard about it. Even though it's not a new book, and I've thought to myself, I'd like to read that. And um, this is quite a good first line. Tell me something you miss from before. And before has a capital B. Which makes me think it maybe is a little bit end of the worldy. Let's see if it beats this first line. I should have prepared this. <laughs> From the time I was a boy, the reckless streak that runs in my family has brought me nothing but trouble. Or tell me something you miss from before. Oh. That is a good first line. I think. Ooh, from the time I was a boy, the reckless streak that runs in my family has brought me nothing but trouble. Or tell me something you miss from before. Do you know what? I think I think this has done it. Tell me something you miss from before. So I think the stranding is our is our current winner. So we only have three books left to unbox. So we will see if this holds on to the title it's the 20th today but before i open today's book i remembered where i heard about the stranding recently and it was on the tv show between the covers a couple of weeks ago which was on bbc one and um, hosted by sarah cox and one of the guests brought this book in as a book that they'd really enjoyed and wanted to talk about so that was where i heard of it um as i was driving home today and i was stuck in traffic and I remembered that today was a book day and it made me very happy. <laughs> so let's see what we have. Uh, it's The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Roffey. Now, I recently unhauled a brand new copy of this. Um, so I have tried to read it when it first came out. Um, I had a library book, I DNF'd it. Then I won a copy. I won the Costa Book of the Year shortlist. This was the winner of that prize. Piranesi was also on the shortlist, so I won a copy of that. Um, and two more books, which I've not yet read on my shelves. So I had this new copy of uh, this book that sat on my shelf for a couple of years. And I think, I'm like 99% sure, it's one of the hundred books I unhauled recently when we moved house. Um, so, there's a quote from Bernadine Evaristo who seemed to like it. So I don't know. Do I want to give this... I mean, there's no harm in giving it another go. Um, but do let me know. We haven't done the first line yet. Have we? I might have to read it if it's got the best first line. Um, so what's it about anyway? Um, it's near the island of Black Conch. A fisherman sings to himself while waiting for a catch. But David attracts a sea dweller that he never expected. I Kayaya, an innocent young woman cursed by Jaliff's wives to live as a mermaid. I think. I didn't read very much, but for some reason, it made me feel a bit male gazy. So if, I can't remember what it was. Do let me know if you've read it and if you think I should give it a shot. Um, <coughs> should we do the first line? David Baptiste's dreads are grey and his body wisened to twigs of hard, hard black coral. 
but there are still a few people around St Constance who remember him as a young man and his part in the events of 1976 when those white men from Florida came to fish for marlin and instead pulled a mermaid out of the sea. I mean, it's not a bad first line. It's a bit long for a first line. There's a lot going on, but you know, we've immediately got the mermaid introduced. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's not gonna beat this one, but let me just remind myself of this one. Tell me something you miss from before. No, this is definitely still the winner, but do let me know if you have any thoughts on the mermaids of Black Conch. Hello, so I have a confession. Today is the 24th of December, Christmas Eve, and I actually didn't open the book on the 22nd, so I have two to open today. The 22nd was my first day of leave, and the day just went away with me. I did spend half the day asleep, to be fair. Um, and then I was intending to open it yesterday, and yesterday the day went away with me as well. It was busy. So we have two to open today. So the first one. Interesting. Across the Void by S.K. Vaughan. Miles from home, every breath counts. Is this sci-fi? I think it's sci-fi. That's quite exciting. I've not heard of this before. Um, hmm. when was this published? It was published in 2019. Shall we read the blurb? Oh, that's appropriate. Christmas Day 2067. Silent night drifts across the ruins of a wrecked spaceship, listing helplessly in the black. A sole woman, May, stares within, the last person left alive of a disastrous first manned mission to Europa, the moon of Jupiter. There is only one person who can help her, her, her ex-husband Stephen, a NASA scientist who was heading up the mission back on Earth. Until that is, she broke his heart and he left both her and the mission. Now May clings to life and it's only his voice travelling across the fathomless miles that can bring her home. In this twisty, gasp-inducing thriller, when each breath is a fight for survival, their relationship is the difference between life and death. This sounds really, really good. I'm not a big sci-fi reader, but I do quite like tipping my dipping my toe in every now and then. This is quite long. It's about 450 pages long. Should we see what the first line is? Okay, the little title is April 2045, Bournemouth, UK. You've gone too far. I mean it's a it's a good first line. It's not as good as what was this one? It's not as good as tell me something you missed from before. So this is still the winner so far, but really, really pleased with that. That sounds really, really good. Um, that's why I love these book boxes, because I always get books that, well, I've not heard of, but also that I wouldn't necessarily have picked up. Because I did ask for lot, sort of like a range of genres this year. Um, so that's good. So we'll open today's actual book, the final book, the final book of the Advent Calendar. Oh, oh, this looks good. Okay, this is called Cat Person and Other Stories. I mean, immediately, I love that. Um, by Kristen Ru Rupenian. The little blurb is sexy, chilling and disturbingly gruesome in finest fairy tale tradition. Wow, this sounds good. Okay, what do we know about this? Where's the author from? Where's she from? Does it say? I think she's American. So this is from 2019. Oh, and I like I like short stories as well. Should we read the uh, should we read the blurb? I'm so excited. Okay. These are stories of women's lives now. They also happen to be horror stories. In some women endure the horror, in others they inflict it. Here are women at work, at home, on dates at the doctors, <clears throat> not on dates at the doctors, on dates, comma, at the doctors, with their families and with their friends. Here are women grappling with desire, punishment, guilt and anger. These are stories to make you feel fascinated but repelled, scared but delighted, revolted but aroused. Well, there you go. Sounds amazing. Um, <clears throat> so, the first story is called Bad Boy and the first line is... Our friend came over the other night. I mean, that's not really doing much for me as a first line, to be honest. 
But this book sounds really, really good. It's getting compared to Shirley Jackson, who I do like. Angela Carter, who I've not necessarily always got on that well with. But really, really, really looking forward to this. Um, so in terms of first lines then, The Stranding wins it. So this is The Stranding by Kate Sawyer. First line of this one is, tell me something you miss from before before with a capital B, which makes a difference. And should we carry on reading and um, I'll let you know what the next line is. So tell me something you miss from before. Toast, yes, bread, fresh, crusty bread. So that is the book, The Stranding, that I'll be reading in January for the Past and Future Readathon. I'll link my TBR video down below. Um, but in terms of this calendar overall, I'm very, very pleased with it actually. Most of the books I haven't heard of one or two of them I have and was keen to read anyway. The only one I was slightly lukewarm on was The Mermaid of Black Conch. But then I have since had a look at Story Graph to see um, how other people had rated it, who I follow on Story Graph. And there's a couple of people gave it really high rating, so I'm minded to give it another go. Um, but yeah, really, really strong advent calendar. Thank you to Pat, if you're watching, who um, runs the Gently Used Book Club. Um, I will link their website down below. Um, yeah, super, super excited. So thank you for watching. Let me know if you've read any of these books and let me know if you got any books for Christmas and what they were. I'll speak to you again very soon. Bye.